Hey everybody, well, you know, uh, it's me, Andy. <clears throat> um, I'm going to start creating, or actually not creating, but I'm starting a video log, a vlog, like some people like to call it. Um, this is now my, what, 10th day in here? Uh, no, I started on the 30th. So it's like my 11th day in um, rehab here at the Dom, uh, at, the, at the VA of um, It's been kind of hard. Um, a new environment, obviously. Uh, I went through uh, DTs pretty bad. And that was pretty hard um, because, you know, um, I mean, just physically hard and as well. Emotionally, emotionally is hard as well because, um, you know, it just made me feel like shit. Uh, they gave me some stuff called Librium to uh, help me get over the DTs, but that stuff put me in a very deep sleep and uh, really started um, triggering nightmares. Um, a lot of the stuff that... Uh, I avoided, um, I guess, by using alcohol or what have you. you know. So uh, anyway, I've just been uh, trying to create, like, or I mean, get my feelings out, um, keeping a diary in a sense, and uh, you know, like some of the things that I experienced um, while I was in the Air Force, not necessarily as. Um, um, in service, like, you know, um, I don't know if you guys have read my post or I don't know how many of you are actually friends of mine on Facebook, but, um, you know, I was working at Riverside County, um, a long time ago. Uh, I was doing my externship as an EMT and a woman came in, uh, with a 14 month, uh, year old boy who she proceeded to tell me that, um, he had diarrhea for <clears throat> a couple of weeks, and she didn't know what to do. So I, I was the guy that would do like the medical history, do vital signs and stuff like that. And um, so I, I took the kid in to the room where I did, you know, my stuff. Yeah, along with the mom, and um, I pulled his. Uh, pampers down in order to get a rectal thermometer and I had noticed um, that this lady had sewn her child's buttocks together with needle and thread and he had gangrenous postules like all over his butt you know and it smelled really really bad so um, I asked her to, you know, have a seat and wait because I wanted to get a hold of the charge nurse and I took the child with me out to the charge nurse and showed her what was happening. Being that this was a county hospital, there were deputies there, so she summoned a deputy. And the three of us walked back into uh, into the vital signs room, which is what they called it. And... Um, And so at this point, I had handed the child over to um, the nurse and I had to physically restrain the deputy from um, assaulting this woman because he was very upset and understandably, I mean, I was upset when I first saw this thing and it, it took every bit of strength that I had to not smack this lady myself. Um, that child lost uh, about 60% of the muscle tissue in his backside and almost died as a result of this gangrene going through his system. It's something that um, I suppressed for a very, very long time. And um, it's still very hard for me to talk about it. There's times when 
When I dream, I dream about the smell of rotting flesh. And um, I don't know if you've ever smelled rotting human flesh, but it's not particularly pleasant. So um, I'm trying to work through these emotions and some of the I guess you would call trauma that I experienced. Um, this is one of the, I think that was the only time I, I ever cried at work. Uh, I mean, I just had a straight breakdown because I just couldn't believe that someone subject a child to, to that type of treatment. I don't, um, I don't know, like, where I'm going with this, but it's just something I need to put out there because I feel like I'm going fucking crazy, and, and I am actually terrified to go to sleep. Being a medic gave me a, a sense of a uh, hero complex because many times I was able to help people, you know, um, and save their lives, but many other times I couldn't. I mean, there wasn't anything I could do. And it was devastating to me because I wanted to save everybody. I've always been the type of person to give um, and think of others before uh, myself. Um, so these dreams started coming back and um, some of these dreams, like I have um, the people that I couldn't save they come back and they claw at me, they claw at my flesh, they claw at my face, and they claw at my skin and, and, and my arms, and, and they try and pull me down into the darkness with them, and they're screaming, like, why didn't you help me? Why didn't you do enough to save me? But I was just a medic, you know what I mean? What exactly was I supposed to do? I mean... Doing CPR on somebody that's having a heart attack or give me some on the Heimlich maneuver because they're choking on something. Realizing that someone's having a bad drug interaction and being able to counteract that. It's, those are things I could do, that I could, I could prevent and, and save a life. But when someone has stage four terminal lung cancer, there's nothing I can do about that. You know, and I ended up building relationships with some of these people because I took care of them long term. And I took care of their families as well because, you know, the, the families would obviously come in and end up building relationships with these people. When they died, it was extremely hard for me um, having experienced like losing a family member when I was young uh, my brother Lewis who, you know, who died when he was 16 and I was 10 years old I mean that was I think that was something I never recovered from and being put in a situation as a young man um, where um, life and death was an everyday occurrence. Um, it really it, it weighed me down. I don't, I don't know what else to say, but I don't want to. I don't want to. 
I don't want to think about that stuff anymore. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm terrified of sleeping. I'm terrified of my dreams. And I'm terrified to be alive. Because I just, I don't know how to deal with this anymore. So, um, I'm just going to you know, call this a cut, and I hope, um, I hope some of you understand um, what it's like to um, have PTSD and how it affects the, a person's emotions. So that's a cut.